Welcome everyone to the late game episode 30. My name is Lycan and with me I have in control and a very special guest, a bed. It's a very nice bed. Glad to have the bed here. Uh, but <laughs> while the bed is doing the bed thing, Jeff, as always, glad to have you back. What have you been up to? Um, Pretty much the same old kind of stuff. You know, I do a lot of D&D. I do a lot of StarCraft 2 streaming, Warhammer, that kind of stuff. Uh... Nothing too terribly exciting to report in the near, near future as far as, you know, I'm not announced for any casting gigs or anything like that, so just just keeping it real, living yeah. life. Good, good. And then for the first time on here, uh, and first time on a talk show in a long time, I would assume, it's Combat X. Uh, Wasif, what's your last name? Khan. Wasif Khan, Combat X. Here he is. Uh, so... Real quick, for those who don't know, or those who are just turning it, tuning in uh, to my show for the first time, I'm new to the scene compared to a lot of these two people, especially these two guys here. So the history of Combat X in StarCraft is a completely new thing to me. We're going to talk about it near the end of the of the show, but just just know that if I ever say anything and you're like, oh, what, everyone knew that, and I'm asking questions, it's because I don't know Dick. So you've got like clean slate with me. I'm... I'm still learning about Combat X. So right. I've, I've been stalking you all day, trying to see what I could figure out. And uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, before that, uh, Steven uh, will be here with us later. So don't worry about that. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and kick this right off with WCS 2015 Season 2, the round of 16, going to be in Toronto, Canada. Uh, as a Canadian, are you going to be there, uh, Wasif? Uh this is my first time hearing about it, but now that I've heard about it, I will most likely try to make time. When is it again? Uh, this is going to be the, oh, I think it's the, one second, the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Yeah, why not? Of June? Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then you got to hop on those tickets before they sell out. Uh, can someone link it in the chat so I can just... Guys, you want to meet Combat X, you got to give them that link ASAP. All right. Who wins? Steven. Hey. And we have hey, Steven. what's up, buddy? I heard you're all grown up now and shit. I am. I grew some balls. It was nice. Uh, well, you know, Combat X showed up on time for that podcast that he was invited to. Wow. I saw. I thought we were doing the first hour of this about a uh, Counter Strike because I saw that you were going to be on here, but I guess. Well, even us guys that play other games, Destiny, which is weird for you to be throwing rocks in that house. Uh, <laughs> I'm not throwing still rocks. Show What's wrong up? with Counter Strike? I like Counter Strike. What's wrong with Counter Strike? Still show up on car. time, bro. I love you guys. Oh my god. What? How's it, how's it going, Combat X? You got all your uh, degrees in order and all that shit. I finally got a bachelor's of computer science. I learned where RAM was, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> finally learned how to build a computer. That was nice. You have a double major, don't you? No, I dropped out of business. I did not know how to do accounting oh. in my life. Could have got seven percent financial accounting, and then I was out. Computer science and math. Now I'm looking for a job. Wait, so you can do math, but you can't do uh, accounting? That's what it says, but like, swear, I swear to God, they're completely different. Like, accounting is not math. You're doing, you're adding, like, debits and credits, and, like, they don't do, like, normal addition. It's fucking weird. I don't know. Isn't, I thought, isn't comp sci a pretty heavy math degree? Don't you need, like, a decent amount of... Yeah, but, like, it's, like, easier math. It's, like, you know, shit that happens on a computer. Okay. You know, prison stuff and or gates, you know, all that good stuff. How's the job market in uh, where you're at, like Canada and stuff like that? Because in America, it sucks yeah, balls. Yeah, I'm getting a job in Silicon Valley because, like, there's a lot of software developing, like, potential there, and they pay a fuck ton, so might be coming down to the States, but if not, then Toronto and Waterloo is kind of my primary locations, and, you know, it's the job's pretty sweet. Like, I got the degree because the demand is pretty high in the industry, so, yeah. Nice, man. Absolutely. Cool. All right, we'll get more into the Combat X uh, dealio, what's going on with his life and all that soon. Uh, but we were just getting into WCS, uh, round of 16. So, uh, season 2, 2015. Uh, we'll, let's start with Jadong, right? It's your boy, Jeff. He's mm -hmm. in a group with Rhett, Petraeus, Stardust. Uh, do you see him having any issues in that group? Oh, yeah, I think uh, I think any of these groups. Like, it used to be that if Jadong had 
two Zergs in a group, it's like an auto pass for him. But I think, I think uh, it's been shown that there are guys that absolutely can compete with him. And in the past, Petraeus has taken a map or two off of him as well. Um, Rhett seems to be playing in, in really good form, and he's got players like TLO and Snoot on his team that he's absolutely going to be pursuing practice with. So by no means do I look at this group and say Jadong's got an easy-peasy pass. Um, he had all Protoss, and he had some fucking trickster Protosses, so if there was ever a warm-up to be ready for Stardust, I think he had it. Um, getting past Elfie and Hass is a pretty big feat for him in terms of... Like, it's it's funny to say that. People are like, if, if you would have told me that it's hard for Jadong to beat these guys, I would have cried myself to sleep in 2011 or something like that, but it's it's not. It's, it's 2015, and these guys can compete with him, but he made it past it in pretty... Pretty strong fashion, so it'll be fun. What did you think of the games this past week with Jadong? Oh, it was a great group. I, I thought, I think uh, a lot of competitive games kind of lately have devolved into like a single strategy being executed, and either works or it doesn't, and then it falls on its face or wins, and then that's kind of the game. But that whole, I've actually really enjoyed the overly foreigner WCS, I guess is what I would say. Like, the Koreans are still monster moding, but not quite as hard as they used to. Um, well, I think that's largely in part because most of those monsters are still in Korea, actually. Mm. Um, but it was really fun. The, the base trade games, the, the extremely weird proxy gate situations where he then goes to the gold. It's the only time as, as a StarCraft fan I've ever been excited about a gold base in my entire <laughs> fucking life. But um, being a fan of Jadong will do that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, Jadong. He's gonna have a he's gonna have a, a decent fight. I'm excited to see his group. I'm excited to see Jadong play throughout. Even as a you know, I moved on to to more Terran based uh, gods in the scene to to follow. I'm really excited for Jadong. I was very excited for him in his run in 2013. So I'm hoping we can kind of see something like that play out and with a little less cannon rushing. Um, <laughs> whoa, whoa! Why less cannon rushing? Did you follow uh, 2013's WCS? Uh, I did not. Okay, SOS. Uh, Every game, cheese Jadong, and beat him four one. I think it was. What was I, it? I, I, I don't know what people have against cheese. Like I love cheese. Cheese is literally like. It's one of my not. Favorites. You know that it's not that there's an issue with cheese. It's that that was the entire series. Was we went through a whole weekend of just some incredible games like goosebumps and and screaming and you're just so emotionally exhausted by that Sunday, and then that crap with the cannon rushing every game. It was just. It wasn't fun. Yeah, we have a different opinion on the topic. I mean, like, I would have been thrilled. I would have been like, oh, my God, a third cannon rush? Let's fucking go. I don't know. It's different, different mentality. The maps were extremely favorable to it. It, it kind of was almost like SOS, he, he did it. Then he did it uh, in, at IEM for the $100,000 winner-take-all in 2014, I think it was. So it was Well, that just... was like the month where Protoss couldn't lose. All yeah. those maps in that, in that circulation were easy thirds, Cannon rushable, like they were Blink all in. strong Protoss era during that time. But yeah, I don't disagree with Combat X. Like, uh, it's funny because you know when I see pro gamers play, I either want a really rad cheese or I want a forty-five minute fucking crazy base trade hectic <laughs> game. You know, like, uh, and of course I, I like everything in between as well. But I think the the extremes are pretty fun, and and people tend to agree that like during the Swarm Host hate period of time when Destiny was at its highest power, um. There was like like the games would go like two hours, you know, and and everyone would be like, "This is so terrible," but you would watch the viewership and it would keep rising the entire yep. fucking time. Like, I think the viewership only rises because as games go on longer and longer, people kind of want to see the end. I agree, but and I, I mean, you'll that's, notice that's that when you stream. Well, there was that, oh yeah, sure, sure. The but I mean, like, if, the game go, if any game goes long for any point, of, like even if it's like in a villa, yeah. fucking with thirty-seven yeah. ravens at the corner of the map, like the viewership will rise as people want to see the end of the game. Right. I think um, cannon rushing can be exciting, like, com like combat X says, but combat X, like even you agree, like in some instances, cannon rushing is really fucking boring. If it's the kind of map where you put down like it's like one pylon and one cannon, and it's like completely walled off somehow. Um, what was the uh, map? Yeah, uh, I don't remember uh, the name uh, like. Oh, there, there was, was a like, map like the cloud. The, fuck, I forgot what it was called. But there was one where you could put different. one. Yeah, you could put one pylon and one cannon to kill the okay, third. Yeah, 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 like yeah. shit like that. It's not exciting to watch. Like That's if okay. it's like a crazy ass fucking oh, cannon rush where like drones are coming out and you've got like micro and everything going on and fucking it all comes down to that versus the map where it's like oh well he put the two pylons down this cannon rush is now unstoppable right. and the game is probably then it's like oh, okay it's not really that exciting. Yeah. And That's why we have neutral buildings at the base of the ramps because there was a like entire wings of liberty period of time where Protoss were like. Doop, 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 just go over to the ramp here, build a couple well, of pylons. Well, even, um, 
even in Heart of the Swarm, there were a couple maps. What yeah. was the map? SOS played, it might have even been Life on the on the four player map where you have the natural in your base where you can rush like three different bases yeah. with like two pylons and a cannon. <laughs> and Life could never get a hat treat on anywhere because the probe was always falling around. I don't know. I see it as like, why not abuse it if it's like there? You know what I mean? It's the map's fault. Don't get me wrong. The developers of the map, like, they fucked up, but like, if it's in the map pool and it's an easy win strategy, I mean, like, it depends on what you're playing for. If you're playing to get better on ladder, oh, then... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, don't don't confuse the two issues. Like, this isn't a false dilemma, you know? Like, I mean, like, if people want to use it to win, like, I mean, we're all... I mean, you should. But that doesn't mean that it's not boring as fuck to watch, okay, you know? Fair. I agree. Like, same, same thing with, like, Broodlord and Fester back in, like, um, Wings of Liberty. Like, oh, yeah, sure, you should be playing right. to win. But, I mean... I that doesn't mean it's not boring as fuck for everybody to have to suffer it through. We've all been on both sides of that, too. Like, I, I remember every Protoss for as long as they could abuse the Archon toilet, but it was, like, yeah. the saltiest 30 seconds you'll ever see in a game. When, when, when they're all just, when you're both just sitting there and the Archons are in there and the entire Zerg ball and they're just like, you son of a bitch, I fucking hate you. You're just like, ha, 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 ha. wait till it comes out. It was fun. Yeah, it was so horrible. I, I, I Go ahead, as far as entertainment goes, I don't know. The way I see it is, like, the average game's around, like, what, 20, 25 minutes. If you, that's, like, if there's a normal distribution around that. And so any games on the sides are obviously going to be more fun to watch. So that's why there's more viewership that's or there's more yep. entertainment, entertainment yeah, around it. I agree with you. I really do. And despite being frustrated against cheeses, I absolutely believe it's a viable, you know, strategy and all that. I just, that particular series... Every can rush that it was heartbreaking because the entire crowd was rooting for Jadong. Everyone. I'm kind of surprised Jadong didn't hold off like the last like game. If he, if he saw it coming twice or if it happened two or three times, like how the fuck did you not hold it off after the third time? You know, it's a crazy series. You should definitely well, watch it's it. RTS mentality. You, you always say to yourself, they wouldn't be crazy enough do to do again. a third time in a row, would they? And then they do, and you're like, I'm an idiot. You know? like that. Yeah. All right. Just so uh, let's see. The other three groups: A, B, C. Uh, J Dong's was Group D. Uh, group A: Four G G and Bunny, Hydra, and Gung Fu Banda. Now let's talk about uh, Gung Fu Banda for a second. That guy drew a horrible hand. This is his first time in, uh, in WCS Premier, and uh, I don't know about Challenger, but I know it's definitely his first time in WCS Premier. And uh, he's now in the round of 16. And he has to go against 4GG Bunny and Hydra. And uh, Combat X, if you don't know, Hydra was the uh, the runner-up last season for WCS. Oh, yeah. So 4GG, uh, one of the best Terrans in the world. Bunny, uh, top the foreign scene. So this is a hard group for him. But then again, it's also a hard group for Bunny because we want the foreign hope. We want to see Bunny do well. Uh, Jeff, do you think Bunny has a chance to, to blow past 4GG and Hydra? Uh, and, uh, you know... Don't discount Gung Fu Panda either. He's actually one of the absolute hottest Protosses in Europe right now, which is it's funny because he's young and he's German and he's actually he has kind of a not that e this needs to be mentioned every time, uh, but he's got a history of being like a pretty big douchebag on the European ladder as well, like most of those guys do. They're pretty angry people over there, um, so it's kind of funny. He comes from from that kind of background, but he's absolutely undeniably amazingly good right now. And I look at that group and I think. Yeah, he drew a bad card. Um, it's really, really rough. Bunny's Bunny used to be a little bit more of a TVP sniper. It's hard to tell because I don't watch every one of his games, and he actually, like, kind of... Bunny's a great guy. I like him a lot, but he kind of equally whines about matchups depending on who he's playing against. Like, there's, you know, there's a period of time where he couldn't beat a Korean Terran, but then he went ahead and smashed a couple of the absolute best. Mm -hmm. But there was a long time there where he couldn't lose to Protoss. So I think he's actually a, a pretty good threat to get out. But 4 is a TVP sniper. He's, like, auto-win. And then Hydra looked unstoppable in WCS NA. Like he, he just he crushed it, and he looked really good. As far, so it's hard to say. I, I think those two are the absolute favorites. But could Gung Fu Bandit or um, Bunny make it out of there? I, I think it wouldn't be the biggest upset in the world. 4GG and Hydra are not like it's not like Life and you know right. Dream or some of these guys in Korea that are just destroying it right now. They're really, really good. Don't get me wrong, but they are not the world class. Well, the top tier world class monsters. 4GG is in TVT. I will say that. I really do think he is. Okay. So uh, let's see. We have two other groups left: Harstom, Firecake, Marine Lord, and Polt Group B. Uh, Jeff, is this the year of Harstom? Uh, and do you <laughs> think it it can be with that group: Firecake, Marine Lord, and Polt? Uh, well, I, I definitely think Harstom can make it out of there. I know that's like a super generic castery thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's 
really almost anybody at, at, at the round of 16 it's like everybody has a chance to do anything i think um do i think harson's one of the favorites to make it out of there yeah i, I think he would be um every year is the year of harson though by the way so it's it's a little bit of a misnomer um <laughs> it's confusing for people because it's just said the year of harson but it's technically okay. every year is the year of harson so it doesn't have to culminate in a victory for it to be the year no. of harson okay gotcha it every never year. has so you know okay and See, I thought it was always the prediction, you know, saying, "Ah, oh, this will be the year of Harston, but I gotcha. No, I, I think I think him making out round of 16, like, that's the thing that's so hard for foreigners in particular in these systems, is it's like, if he makes out of this group, that's a huge feat, and that's awesome, but that just means in, like, the, you know, in the next round, he's going to have to face two Koreans, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and if he, and then that's where most foreigners fall on their face and die. And then everyone's like, okay, well, you know, back to normal. Right. Um, and that's what's so tough about this is it's not that you have to beat one Korean or two to win a tournament or to win a title for yourself. It's that you have to beat like four or five, and they're all the best. It's yeah, hard. absolutely. And then last, last but not least, Group C: Lobo, TLO, oh. Ayagus, and Ayasuno, Sanu. Uh, TLO. Do you think he, he's gonna? What do you think of his uh, chances of getting out of this group and making it top eight or further? Did you ask me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you asked one of the other guys. We're just okay. It's me over and over again. Uh, I think I think TLO did an awesome job getting as far as he did, and in fairly convincing fashion. I think he was. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he came out number two, I think, in his group before. Or was it number one? I can't remember, but he did really well. Mm -hmm. um, I know Reddit got really hyped on him, but I'm not sure. Um, it, traditionally, this is where TLO kind of peters off, and again, that's like what a what a horrible thing to say because it's like. Top 16 in WCS is, I think it's like $8,000 or something crazy like that, too. Like, it's a lot of money, and it's already a, a huge accomplishment. But this is where the foreigners drop off, and the 1 to 3 to 4 advance that are, like, the champions of the foreigners, only to get smoked pretty hard, usually. And that's, like, your manas, right. you know. Uh, Nanny was not in this one. He didn't even make it this far. So it's, it's snoots already out, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's tough. Um I don't. I don't think I have anything especially unique to say in here. I guess my prediction would just be that TLO doesn't make it out of this group, okay. and that's not because I don't like TLO. I love the guy, but uh, these groups are just so tough. <laughs> yeah, I I agree, and uh, that wasn't a generic caster answer at all. I think that's a, you know, a lot of people are hoping for it, but everyone hopes for the foreigners to make out in a lot of ways, and um, we also have Lobo uh, in that group as well. Um, Lobo's a guy to watch. He's, yep. he's been people have been hyping up for a while. And his PVZ in particular is extremely sharp. That's what people kind of know him for. But it was funny. He had two Terrans in his last WCS group, and he was like, I didn't even practice against Terran. I played, like, <laughs> one game in the last week. And his PVT looked damn good. So he, he's, he's, in t he's in good shape. He, I could see him coming out of there, actually. Yep. All right, cool. So that is uh, WCS. Didn't even change the title bar for that one. Uh, now we're going to move on to the Bunny versus Snoot best of 69. Uh, wow. Let me, uh, one second. So did, Steven, did you get to watch any of that? Or did you see any of the hype around it? Oh, yeah, I saw a lot of the hype. I thought that the Alugic thing was, how do you pronounce that fucking Al website? Aligulac? Yeah. Aligulac. I thought that prediction was pretty cute, that it was spot on. <laughs> Aligulac's been it? accurate quite often. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the highest percentage probability of the winning was the exact score that it ended up as. Was it not? Somebody posted yeah. a picture of it on Reddit? It was yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. So uh, it was... It was crazy. It was long. I know that uh, the casters were exhausted. I know that the I talked to Bunny and Snoop before the show today, and they were they were both exhausted. So um, great on all of them for that kind of stamina. It almost went to twenty four hours. Um, I want to make a correction real quick, by the way. Yeah, because I didn't know you were asking me that question. I do think Tilo makes it out of the group. It's Tilo and Lil Bo they're gonna make it out of that group. My bad. There's no Korean in there. I guess I assign you. I'm not big on the Chinese players. I don't think they're super amazing. They've been better in the past. Anyways, my bad. But yeah, go ahead. there we go. Um, so Steven, uh, let, first of all, I think it was an awesome event. It, they raised a huge prize pool. I can't remember what it was at the end, but it was, I believe was it like they just did a report act or, uh, they said the results for it. If you go to Reddit, it's really cool. I didn't know the players were getting the money from that and they made a, f a fucking good mm -hmm. amount of money. Consi I mean, they streamed for, it was like, someone said 18 hours or something like that. What's yeah. it What's it was this like in the hundreds of thousands? The tens uh, of thousands. thousands. Yeah, it was uh, Bunny wins $2,792, and Lobo wins 
and Snoot got 1,254. And this is, of course, uh, from the donations. I guess the stream was 18 hours. I, I doubt yeah. the games were 18 hours. But they also got 833 subs. So, I mean, the obvious next question is, Destiny, when are you hosting this Best of 69? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, fuck but no, that. seriously, uh, that, that's <laughs> one of the things being discussed on the on Reddit today is uh, the viability of getting these people to do more of these kind of shows because it's it's different. It brings a lot of people. I mean, obviously, that was a huge uh, amount of money brought on by just viewers. I don't know if they started with a certain amount, like five hundred dollars, and then anything after is going to be uh, is going to be you know put on there. But I remember when I got up in the morning, they had been going for six seven hours or something like that and it was our it was up to 800 and then just throughout the day it skyrocketed yeah. so I, I liked it yeah the viewership was good i mean the people came out and contributed it's awesome let's not forget too that this was to help this was a tier was it not for the home strike cup did i remember that correctly home strike cup or the rifkin base trade team? or it was the rifkin one okay oh, well, that i don't know I don't, I don't actually know you I'm should just... have done your goddamn homework because my uh. memory is shit um well, anyways, it was a, it was an awesome stream to raise things for other events as well, and the community kind of keeps coming out and funding this stuff, and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred and thirty-three subs, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, is actually an incredible number. Like that's that's weird in our little StarCraft corner of the universe. Like if you watch Summit, that's not weird at all because the guy gets five hundred fucking subs every time he turns on his his webcam. <laughs> but for us StarCraft people, that's incredible, and I think yes. it's it's so cool that people did that because they already have a crap ton of subs. There's already a lot of people that love their content that they tune that they put on all the time and uh and yet that many more people were like yeah yeah let's get on board because of the ridiculous amount like best of 69 are you fucking kidding me it, it was 35 28 was the final score or something like that and it that is so many games that's like, a lot of a games. long day of practice was was 25 games for a starcraft pro they yeah. played way more than that so yeah, they almost made it oh, to the it's full. Oh, total subs. My bad. Okay, never mind. Still yeah, bad. still cool. <laughs> still cool. Just not as cool. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they jumped a ton. Uh, and so talking about first of all, let's talk about the endurance of Zombie Grub and Rifkin, right? Like I know that near the end. <laughs> they... Fucking phrasing, dog. Come on. <laughs> Jesus uh, they. Uh... You know, I don't even think that was that that much of a phrasing issue. But thank you for drawing attention to it. Oh, uh, <laughs> it could be. It could be. You know what you do? You buy a recorder and you listen to yourself talk. Uh, yep. I, I will. I'll listen after. I trust me. I, I listen to the old episodes of the show and I cringe so bad. And I, I cringe slightly less every time. Anyway. This is my old YouTube videos. It's rough I, shit. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's rough shit. Oh, you can't be as bad as the two mesh pie videos that I've been seeing. But Anyways, they're anyway. incredible. Yes. Endurance. Uh, is good. It's funny because they lasted watched. like 18 hours, didn't they? Like, jeez. Yeah, they just kept going. It was great stamina. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's funny. Like, I I actually watch a lot of their broadcasts when they do content. I think they're a pretty damn good casting duo. I find them both funny. But it was like hour 15 or 16 that I said, I'm like, let's, let's check this out. Let's see how they're doing. And it it was just evolved into giggling, talking about random shit. Like they were they were absolutely psychedelic. And uh, <laughs> tip of the hat to them. It wasn't my cup of tea. I was like, okay, I'm getting the fuck out of here. This is not even Starcraft anymore. But yeah, well, uh, people stayed in for the long haul, and it's awesome. Yeah, they did. I did the DreamHack community cast recently, and I just even the six hours of that is it was me and Pig, and that was uh, it's pretty rough. So I can't imagine what this was like for them. But it was good, and I think the event itself was awesome, and I'd like to see more. So Combat X, when, I, when you decide if you're going to do uh, HOTS or if you're going to do Legacy, whichever you decide, once you get to like you know the top tier again on the ladder, I'm going to find you a, an opponent. We're going to do this, right? So uh, that will be your breakout. Maybe Steven, right? Steven <laughs> in control. People are getting talks about Deezer, but like I don't know. I don't think he plays anymore. Yeah, maybe we got to hunt him down and uh, resurrect him as well. No, no, no. You're new, Lycan. <laughs> Combat X is a pretty cool guy who's actually done videos to help people and stuff like that. And his uh, zany tactics was more of a character. Deezer is actually a. He's a troll. He was. He not even a. Yeah, he's a troll. I guess it's like the generic internet term. But he he actually hacked and like hunted uh, people and really harassed. Did Deezer actually? Oh, oh God, I can't believe I'm coming to his defense. <laughs> I don't think Deezer actually ever hacked. But he did everything but. Yeah, so, like, I know he. You, you really think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played games against him where I wasn't streaming and he was 
proxying on four player maps and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Okay. Are you sure yeah. it was Deezer? Because I know there were a couple people on the ladder that started to make Deezer like. Oh, names. That's, okay. Steven, you're like a child of the internet. So you're gonna do that thing where like, no, I wasn't at his house and I didn't watch him do it. But no, no, I'm sure serious. I know because yeah. no, 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 because no, anybody that had to deal with this bullshit, I had to deal with the most of it. There was one guy that I ran into that I started like his name was like fucking. It was something stupid like Deezer Control or some shit like that, and I ran into him and he started playing like in cra crazy suspect or whatever. I was like, okay, well, obviously the guy's ghosting or whatever. And then obviously after I say that, it's some guy that makes a fucking post, and he's like, I just made this name because it sounds good, and, like, my dead grandmother said this to me before she fucking died, and, like, and now Destiny's making fun of me, and everybody's coming, so, like, <laughs> I'm just trying to be, like, extra thorough. I don't know. I, I never thought they'd do that. I was that. sure I as you can be in, in this world of StarCraft. Okay, like, so uh, we we don't resurrect Deezer, but we find Combat X, a suitable opponent, and we, and we get this best to 69. I'm, I'm almost there. I started in Platinum, like, I don't know, two days ago. I'm already, like, Masters rank something. I don't know. Widow mines are so fucking gay. Oh my! Sorry, we'll rant about that later. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll t we'll talk about your experiences coming back. Definitely. Uh, so the best bunny snoot, best sixty nine, huge golf clap to uh, base trade TV. Excellent work, and I hope that we see a lot more of these kind of tournaments. It was fun. We saw some crazy maps. Talking about crazy maps, something I've thought of. The map pool has such a huge impact on the way the games play out. Uh, so, excuse me. So standard. Uh, the way the games play out, this is the way series play out. Uh, I'm going to murder my dog. Do you think that they, they should try to focus on making maps that are that are favorable to certain races? Like two maps that favor Protoss against Zerg and one against Terran. Two that favor Zerg against Terran and Protoss. And then Terran against Zerg and Protoss. And then the seventh map, which is completely neutral. Kind of like a uh, like an overgrowth. You know, the one that everyone kind of chooses. And um, do you think that would possibly, Jeff, uh, have a better impact on the way games play out? Do you ever think that that might address the issue of maybe certain map pools over favoring? Uh, what was the beginning of your question? So do you think that the way people design the maps, the way Blizzard chooses mm -hmm. the map pool, they should choose two that support each race against their non-mere matchups and then have one neutral one? You know, I don't think they make maps with... Well, they have in the past. I think if we're speaking in generalities i don't think they typically make a map saying this one is going to be fantastic for terran or this one will be better for protoss that definitely has happened as, as i say that i know that that has but when they start afresh and they're like okay legacy of the void beta is coming out let's make six maps too good for protoss too good for zerg and too good for terran they don't i don't think they think along those lines do i think it'd be beneficial to think along those lines no i don't i think i think there's certain map features that are obviously better for Protoss, Terran, or Zerg, and they should be they should be aware of it, and maybe certain maps do include those features, absolutely, it's unavoidable, and they should, like, kind of count. So in this sense, I'm agreeing with you. They should be like, okay, well, these two maps have fairly easy to take thirds, which is good for Protoss. These two maps are going to have gold bases, which are generically good for Zerg, typically speaking, but let's make, you know, the third bases have a second entrance that's a little bit more dicey to hold. Let's have the gold bases be too far away to take as a natural otherwise to be exposed like i think they should play with it in that way as opposed to oh yeah this space has got a gold for a natural and it's gonna be you know or not even a natural excuse me but like you get my point it's yeah, easy yeah. for zerg to take but hard for protoss and terran to take so it's good for zerg i don't think they should think of it in those kind of binary terms okay in my sounds good moving on we're going to now talk about uh, the Legacy of the Void beta, right? So a lot of changes have been made, new units have been added, we've continued with the progression of the meta. Um, Jeff, so because I know you've been out of here uh, the most play time on the Legacy of the Void beta, uh, what are your thoughts on the status of it right now? Um, and is there anything in particular that you think needs to be addressed right away? No, there's nothing that's that's uh, glaringly bad and imbalanced right now that just breaks it. Um, for me, it's, it's more just that I'm a really... What's fun for me is keeping track of win-loss and earning points and climbing a ladder and being competitive, I suppose. So for me, Legacy of the Void is like a really cool warm-up, chill place to stay on top of the meta. There's some really fun metas developing inside of Legacy of the Void that's that's very different from Heart of the Swarm, which is which is fresh and unique in its own way. Um, it's kind of fun to not have a super specific MMR, so you're playing kind of against whoever. It allows for you to off-race a little bit more freely, whereas if I go off-race on my... POTS account, I'll just get my ass handed to me twice as hard as I normally do for 10 games in a row. Um, 
So in that sense, it's fine. So I guess if you were asked, you know, as you asked me personally, I just wish they would have a pretend ladder or some shit, just so that it was a little bit more clear that you were playing for something, even though it is in the beta, and that ultimately means it is for nothing. It's still more fun to do that, and I wish they would uh, track it that way. Okay. So you think that definitely uh, a ladder release is something that you're hoping for in the near future? Yeah. But like I I said, it's not game-breaking. Like, I'm going to keep playing. It's just when I play StarCraft, I play one or two hours of Legacy of the Void, and then I go to HOTS for, you know, the rest of the time, whatever it is. And I think we've discussed this before. A lot of people that have kind of strayed away from the beta right now would come back if there was a ladder to have something to mark that progress and to work for uh, within the game. Um, So that's something. What about the new unit, the uh, the Liberator? Liberator? Yeah. What do you think? I am surprisingly very excited about it. Like, uh, well, not very excited. That's that's hyperbolic. Um, I enjoy I enjoy it, and I think it's for a unit that they just unveiled. Pretty damn cool. Like, its anti air ability is strong, but it, it in and of itself, it's a glass cannon. Like, it doesn't take any punishment at all. It's it's completely useless as anti air and TVT. It feels like because any number of Vikings just mow them down. Um, but it's like a it's like a meta changer. Protoss have to consider having a Stargate now for the the tank drops, which are already a nuisance. But then also, Liberators long range and devastatingly good at sniping out units. Um, so it's really fun in that way. And it's it's not what I like about it is is as far as I can tell, it's not the unit that people are like. Oh yeah yeah, minute twenty plus, I just make thirty five Liberators and just win the game. Which you would think with a unit that has long range, high damage, ground attack, and then a splash anti air attack that was the concern but it's really not like that it's really weak it's low attack rate and it has to transform to shoot ground which is a really subtle and nice thing that blizzard did it it makes the decision making very tough tough what also i like about it though is it shows where it's going to shoot so it's kind of a pseudo siege unit like you can defensively set them up and be like okay well if they come in this area they're fucked it's cool yeah so do you think that um with the changes they're making, uh, Total Biscuit recently tweeted that he thinks that they're slowly moving away from the very brave changes they made at the beginning, and it's something that I, in a way, I kind of agree with. Do you uh, share that sentiment as well, or have a different opinion? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I read that from Total Biscuit as well, and I, I think I think I agree with him on like a philosophical level. I suppose that they are they went extreme. I think what he's specifically talking about is they changed the gas to being back to two thousand. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was at 1,500, which meant it mined out super, super fast, but now it's back to 2,000. And they also made it so that the minerals are a little bit less severe. Like, I I can't remember the exact number, but, like, some have 1,750 as opposed to 1,500, that kind of thing. Or no, anyways, it's just less severe. The bases don't mine out nearly as fast. Um, But as a guy that's been playing Lace of the Void since since it came out in, in closed beta and been playing it continuously, the bases probably did mine out too fast when it first came out. And as it is right now, it's still like you have you can do a two base timing attack, but a few minutes after that, like three to five minutes after that, you're gonna mine out your main base, mm-hmm. which makes it a lot more difficult as opposed to in Heart of the Swarm, where it's like two base timing attack. Oh fuck, that didn't work. Well, warp in eight sentries and chrono boost out three more immortals, and I have my next two base timing attack. Like, and that can go on forever. Um, well, it feels like forever. So I actually think it's pretty okay. And also Blizzard from the beginning said. They're going to make severe changes and then dial it back from there as opposed to making small changes and then, like, continuing to pile them on. So I think this is this is an alignment with what they said they were going to do. Okay. What's the average game length for, like, Civ Void? Well, one thing you have to get used to, too, Comet X, is they actually changed the way time is tracked in StarCraft now. Whoa. So, like, literally we're not on Blizzard time anymore. Um, but so the average the time I, is still very short, though, compared yeah, to... Yeah, but the reason I tell you that is because, like, You'll play a middle, you know, like a mid-range game and be like, God, that felt like 20 minutes, and it'll actually be 12 or 14. Uh, so, you start off with more workers or something, right? You start off oh, with yes. more workers, and it's actual seconds and actual minutes. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so the games do feel like they go very fast. or the, Well, they can feel like they go long, but you look at it, and you a lot happens in a very yeah, short yeah. amount of it's time. Like, it's economy. You start off with more shit. Yep. Yeah, you, that whole early game of, like, you know, the first few workers being built, you know, is kind of just removed. You start with those 12 workers, and I know with Terran, it's immediate supply depot with your first SCV. Really? So, yeah. Okay. So it moves quick. It moves quick. Steven, have you had a chance to get on the beta lately? No, not at all. Okay. Cool. So uh, <laughs> um, when they do release the ladder, are you going to come on? Um, when the ladder comes out, I might. 
Okay. Well, I hope they do bring the ladder then, because I know the beta needs its savior. To, wow, uh, thanks, buddy. You're welcome. So, uh, all right, cool. Legacy of the Void beta. Still a lot of changes coming. Still a lot to be talked about uh, as things continue to progress forward. Uh, let's talk one more thing in control. Protoss. How are you feeling as a Protoss? Are you you, uh, you feeling things are in a better state for your race? Yeah, a lot better. Um, before they they made two fairly fairly recent balance patches that were pretty subtle, but in their subtleties they had big impacts. Protoss before that. I would never be as severe to say it was unplayable, but you played it knowing that you kind of had one arm tied behind your back. Um, still, as it is right now, Desro runs, you know, uh, a Legacy of the Void term, I believe you do as well. And both of these, from what, I, what I've seen, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been TVZ or TVT or ZVZ every single final and top four and top six, top eight. So it's, it's still pretty obvious that Protoss is the weaker of the three and probably needs some changes. Um, if not changes, then people just need to figure more stuff out. I know that Zergs have been complaining about more. Protoss have circled back to four base one or four gate, excuse me, one base four gating with Adips. Uh, so that's really fun. That's when you know Starcraft's going in great places. Is when that's starting to happen again. Um, so probably some changes need to be ha need to be done. But also the maps we're playing on are pretty bad, so it's it's kind of hard to gauge. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong in that, but it's also that after the first uh, month or two of the Lycan League and uh, the other tournaments, the Protoss kind of just stopped signing up, really. Uh, <laughs> there's a few that sign up consistently, but just after the results, um, yeah. they don't really come around anymore. So hopefully, as these changes keep coming out and they start seeing Protoss do better, because yeah. they're, they're making it farther now, though. The ones that do come out... Yeah, it's, it's better. It's not nearly as bad. Towards the beginning, it was a joke. Like, Ravagers were just silly. Cyclone. <laughs> uh, when Winter switches to Zerg and then beats you, you're, you're like, okay, now it's either, like, Seppuku time or it's, it's let's talk balance. But Switches to Zerg. I'm playing he doesn't play all three races. Well, that's right. Same. He's ran. My bad. <laughs> but he was main, main user. Anyways. Uh, yeah, we're in the, the Total Biscuit Shoutcraft League, and, like, you know, we play a, a Legacy of the Void map every time we do a Clan War, and we're always like, okay, well... Huck, Jeff, shut up. You're not playing that. Uh, Jadong doesn't play Legacy Void. Neither does Suppy, and neither does Lebo. So who are we going to do? Last week we threw out Jadong. He didn't play a single game of Legacy of the Void, and he beat Kiwi Khaki. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's pretty it's pretty funny right now. Awesome. How how you guys been doing in that, by the way? Uh, okay. It's really nice. Um, I actually wish it wasn't like this, but, like, EG is actually really shitty at Clan Wars traditionally because... We have a small team now, and our players are always traveling or doing something else, or or Suppy's like becoming a doctor, or Lebo is a high school student. So it's it's kind of tough uh, for us to get a full roster together. But when we do compete, it's been really fun and nice because it's it's kind of laid back format. Like there's not twenty five thousand dollars at the end of this rainbow. It's just every clan war is five hundred bucks, right? Which is nice, but none of us are like you know, it's not the difference between dinner and no dinner for any of us. So we're we're having fun. It's it's nice. Good. And the map's really cool. Yeah. I, so is any any my favorite map that when Total Biscuit came on and talked about it is the one that has all those turrets, right? Yeah. Is that Crazy still clash. is that still played like throughout? Oh or? yeah. Okay. Yeah, they rotate. It's really fun. Like a lot of maps have stuff like that, and and at first glance you're like, oh, this is shit. This is a very gimmicky map, but they're actually really well designed, so that they're they have the necessary um, formatting of a, a competitive map. And they just have a really funny twist thrown into it. So we're having a good time. Good. So moving on, DreamHack, I don't know how to say it. Leipzig? Leipziger? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Jeff, all that we could get from TLO is that it'll be fantastic. That's all he would say in the comments. Someone said, well. He doesn't know. So you don't, do you know anything? No. No? No. Okay. Uh, what we do, I mean, the nice thing that we have going for us is that I believe that was announced for January of 2016, which means if they do launch Legacy of the Void at, like, BlizzCon or something like that at the end of this year, um, then that will be a Legacy of the Void tournament, in which case there's a very good chance that DreamHack would want to have um, StarCraft Two there, right? Yeah. But if they don't, uh, and this is not like I hate DreamHack or anything like that, but the attitude is very much so, like, StarCraft is relinquish to like a, a partner level like of their partners that they go do sites for if they're like we want starcraft here because we have a really good audience then they'll do it but otherwise no not really it's it's more just csgo and dota mm -hmm. 
um, those are the big games for them right now. Yeah. So let's. I'm hoping. You know, my theory is that is that Legacy of the Void is going to replace the World of Warcraft release time. There's no World of Warcraft expansion. There's no other big game coming out this November. I think that uh, Legacy of the Void is going to be the release, but. I can't speak to that because I literally have no idea. And I know that if you had any idea, you couldn't tell us anyway. So hopefully... I really don't, though. I, like, I, I wish I could say something more hopeful, but um, it's a, it, it's just the best part is it's coming out in January. If, if they were like, Leipzig, Germany, uh, you know, October of 2015, I'd be like, guess what, guys? Get fucked. There's no StarCraft there for sure. Like, yeah. Almost certainly. Yeah. I mean, they use StarCraft footage, and I, I've seen events that didn't have StarCraft use it before, but... Um, TLO has been saying, like, I think it's TLO, someone has been tweeting, uh, StarCraft is coming home or something like that. And I think that was a similar slogan used in that video. So, pretty sure that StarCraft think, is going to be there. I think there. if you're a betting person, you say it is. Like, January, we should have Legacy of the Void out by then. So, yeah. I, I, I think with all those things, an educated guess would be that there will be StarCraft there. And that'd be amazing. It'd be really cool. And I guess that's also a pretty good assumption that uh, season one, twenty sixteen, would be Legacy of the Void. It's a nice break oh, right yeah, after BlizzCon. Yeah. Oh yeah, BlizzCon will be the signing off of Heart of the Swarm, no matter what. And I, think and that's I, a... I would tell you if we're if it's just us girls that I think that's that's actually a little bit late. Even a, a whole year of Legacy of the Void beta, and then a Heart of the Swarm BlizzCon. I'm guessing it's not ideal. I'm guessing at Blizzard yeah. they're not like that's our optimal strategy. Like I'm, I'm guessing it's just what they had to do. Yeah, but uh, in a way, also, uh, it sounds like a good way. You know, one final BlizzCon, sure. the end, the heart of the swarm. Sure. All right. So uh, yeah, we'll see what comes from that. There will be more details, I'm sure, in the near future. Uh, let's go into the StarCrafts mod. Uh, one second. All right, so, anyway, StarCraft mod. Uh, they're running an Indiegogo. They're up to $25,000. Uh, Indiegogo? In, did I say India? Uh, Indiegogo. Uh, my apologies. Sorry, let's, not, let's try to stay off the combat X jokes, please. <laughs> He's back. It's pretty entertaining. I, I'm having a good time right now. I don't know anything that's going on in the scene, so I'm just reading the chat. and I'm going to interview you in a minute, I think. <laughs> yeah, you're next. Don't worry. All right, but let's let's ask you a question. Since we're start talking about something that's become pretty popular in the scene, uh, do you just did you really just cut out StarCraft from your life? Did you stop going to the Reddit? I uh, yeah. After I competed in WCG, I think ten days later I just quit the game and then I just went back to school and I just never. Yeah, <laughs> literally never kept in touch when Heart of the Swarm came out. I played one Heart of the Swarm tournament like right when it came out using only Wings of Liberty units and I got like third or something. But then, ever since then, like nothing. So, uh, you don't you don't know what Starcrafts is. You don't know what Carbots is. Uh, Carbot was around when I was playing. Was uh, it? But he wasn't like popular. I was like he had like ten thousand subscribers at max or something. Okay, so he's huge now. He does World of Warcraft and Blizzard hires it's, him to do all kinds of. He was a pretty cool guy. He has some really funny shit. Yeah, so he's he's become huge, and now what he's done is he's created a mod for Starcraft that it looks like the StarCrafts cartoon, right? So your Zerglings look like the cute little Zerglings. Your Marines are the dopey little fat-headed uh, blue Marines. It's on uh, YouTube? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, It's all over YouTube. He just released... Uh, so he's doing a Kickstarter now, or an Indiegogo. Oh, and $75,000, I believe, is the goal. And at that, they'll be oh, able to make fuck. the mod. Because he needs to hire new people, like... Uh, he's kind of realizing he said this in the in the video he didn't realize how much work it was to make these little 2d sprites right but seventy seventy five thousand dollars for a mod of a game yeah because yeah, they need to hire is... it's Holy it's high shit. but if you look at anyone that's going to make it i mean the guy's only a few days in and he's already got twenty five thousand dollars right oh, i'm not doubting he'll get it i'm just that's crazy yeah and he out he outlines why he's asking for that much they need to hire additional animators uh, to help with the mod, there's a lot more the work than they The problem realized. isn't no, no. Well, to, the pro the problem isn't that the price is like too high for the project. I mean, I'm sure whatever that guy says. I mean, he's he's got so much yeah. credibility based on everything. So the pro it's just a, trying to get seventy thousand dollars out of this community at the moment. I think is it's like a pretty big stretch. I think. Yeah, but I mean, I who knows? Yeah, yeah, who knows? Who knows? He might get it or he might not. I think what's interesting for me is like the end product. I feel like is a God. This is listen. Car Carbot's like one of the most beloved people of our community, so please don't take this as hate or like, 
uh, anything like that. But if we're being honest with ourselves, it's like the end product is a mod that will probably be a flavor of the month kind of thing. Like people will be really excited to play it for a few months, and they will. There'll be a little bit of coverage of it, and then it'll go away. A lot like Starbo. Like Starbo is supposed to be, for some people, they're like, this is what's going to replace StarCraft II. This is better. People talked about it. Tastes was all over its nuts. It actually got them to play the game, which is pretty cool, um, for like a month. And now it's still being played, and, and all the power to them. I'm not hating. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine if they raise $75,000 for Starbo to get it to some level, and then and then there's nothing afterwards? So it just it's interesting to me. But that's their money. That's their people. So maybe, again, they're like, well, it's nothing to you, but to us it was money really well spent, and they're really excited about it. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to make the, some tournaments uh, for the Lycan League. We'll have, you know, a week where we do. It looks hilarious. It, it looks does. fucking awesome. It's I, I love watching it. But I'll just, and again, like I said, it's not hating, but it's just not for me. And I've been around this a long time. From what I can tell, my projection would be people will like it and enjoy it for about a month to two. And mm -hmm. then there'll be 100 people playing it for the next six months, and then it'll disappear and die. And then that's $75,000. Yeah, I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from with that. Um, one thing I like to look at, though, for you know the ever positive side of myself is that maybe one thing he has in here is some really cool things, like in the Starcraft, the Starbo, or Star, damn it, in the Starcrafts mod, is that there are certain things you can get uh, for rewards, and some of those include like a flag that you can plant in your opponent's base, or a cheese that does nothing to the units, but you can chuck it at your opponent while you're fighting him, and I think it's those kind of things that might bring attention. I know Blizzard knows about our our desire for skins and in games crap that we can buy, but maybe just seeing how many people are willing to support this kind of project that's just a mod, like you you said, but they're willing to throw money at this. Maybe it might highlight to Blizzard, you know, that StarCraft yeah, has a lot I mean, more. That's, that's your optimism speaking, and and I will never kill that lichen. Like you hold on to that for as long as your sweet cherub little body can sustain. I think that's adorable, but. To think Blizzard's like, oh my god, we could literally be making $75,000 off of skins? That's not... No, 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 no. They, know, they know, like, I personally have had conversations with some people at Blizzard. I'm like, hey, like, this is a really big concept. I know that Destiny churned up a lot of attention about the same idea. They're not idiots. They, they follow everything socially. Um, if they haven't acted on it, it's because either they're working on Blizzard time, because, you know, like, uh, that's what they do. Or they just don't deem it financially responsible, and it's it would take more money to pay the people to make those things and to implement it than they would they think they would make. So I don't think this like I heard the same language around Starbo. People are like, well, maybe this will draw attention to the fact that if you bring back Brood War units, it's better. And no, it fucking didn't. Nobody like that. That people thought that was true, and then nothing changed. Nothing. So what about? I know that if you knew something in this case you probably couldn't say anything about it but should we think into should we pay a little more attention to what you just said about the kind of mentalities they might have no i i'm speculating okay. um i'm not really you know like, that jeff works for eg not for blizzard right <laughs> like him? well yeah well, but no, they... in the I, in the past okay. like i do talk to a lot of blizzard people and i've, I've done that thing where i'm like well, I, I talked to someone let's just say the thing is blizzard is extreme they're not like it's not a it's not a super unified voice that they just like ring out a single message. Like they, they have a huge democracy in there where all kinds of decisions and thoughts are thrown around. And me talking to any like one group of people is almost never the actual like this is what is 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 going to happen. So I I looked like an idiot a few times and well I've done that more than just a few times. But I, the point is I no longer with confidence say you can. You know, wink, wink, this is probably what's going to happen because I talked to some people. No, right. I, I was just wait and see now. And anything I say is speculation and uh, uh, usually optimism. I usually hope for the best. But with stuff like this, I can't help but to be a little bit pessimistic sometimes. Okay. Well, that's, that's a little deflation. But I, like I said, <laughs> I do want to say, like... That's the funny thing about money. Like to me, that seventy-five thousand dollars is like, oh god, it could have, it could have funded yet another tournament, or like you know, mm -hmm. oh, think of all the pro gamers we could have sent to Korea, like stupid shit like that. That is, that's not actually the way you look at money and value it. 
the people that are that have contributed that twenty five thousand dollars, they're not being duped and they're paying into a guy that is beloved and honest. He's not going to sail away to Mexico and live like a king. Like he's going to do this thing. So you're going to get exactly what you pay for. And to those people, fuck yeah, that's awesome. To us on the outside, who are probably not going to contribute to that, are going to be like, ah, uh, you know, it's it seems like kind of a waste. But only time will tell. We'll see. Yep. All right, so uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna, the last two segments of the show, we're going to talk to Combat X, uh, see what has been, what is going on, and what will happen with him. And then we will go to questions, and that'll be uh, that'll call it a night. So we will return soon, and uh, stick around. We'll talk to you in a bit. 